Have you ever found yourself watching your favorite movie or TV show and thought, wow, this is awesome. How did they even make this? Well, let me show you. This is what an episode of Stranger Things looks like in an editing software. And every single one of these little colorful boxes represents a cut. To make a polished product, editors have to make thousands of these cuts. You wanna switch camera angles? That's a cut. You wanna shorten a really long take? That's a cut. You wanna splice two clips together with one of those awesome star transitions? That also involves a cut. So cuts are everywhere in movies. But the question is, are they actually necessary? Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know where this is going. Yeah, I'm gonna attempt to make a movie with zero cuts. And I'm not talking about a slow-paced drama. No, I wanna make an action movie that has exterior and interior shots. Lots of camera movement, and most importantly, stunts. And there's only one rule. The entire film must be captured in one single shot. So, you might be curious why I'm doing this. It's because I've been editing a lot recently. So much, in fact, that I actually broke the cut button on my keyboard. I've pressed that thing so many times that it just eventually popped off, leaving me with no other option. Okay, so I kind of lied, that didn't happen. The truth is that I just watched a movie called 1917. 1917 is a two hour long movie that looks like it was filmed in one unbroken shot. In reality, there's actually a lot of hidden cuts throughout the movie, so it's not actually just one shot, but the most famous action scene is an eight minute long shot without any cuts. And I just find that fascinating and kind of intimidating. For some reason, I want to try it. I started making movies when I was 13, and back then I was obsessed with filming anything that involved stunts, but unfortunately, there was one stunt that I always wanted to try, but I never quite knew how to pull it off. And that was the infamous wall smash. It's pretty awesome. If you haven't seen one, it looks a little something like this. I can't stop thinking about this stunt, but unfortunately, I'm not a professional, and I think it's just too dangerous to try. So what we're doing is we're building a wall to break through. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, sorry. This is my friend Jake, and he's really good at building things. So the other day I texted him and said, hey, would you be down to build a fake wall in your house that we could break through for a movie stunt? And to that he responded, yeah, for sure. And I didn't really believe him, so I said, for real? And he said, yeah, for sure. So suddenly we found ourselves at the Home Depot, buying materials for our wall that we're about to smash through. And if you told 13 year old me that this is what I would be doing when I got older, I'd probably start crying tears of joy. As funny as it might sound, this is truly a dream come true. It's time to assemble the wall. Let's hope this fits. Fits like a glove. Tyler, you're gonna be breaking through that. I'm like actually kind of worried. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh my. All right, let me explain the plot real quick. This is my friend Tyler, and in the movie, he's going to be playing a robber sneaking into Jake's house. However, Jake's character is a no-nonsense kind of guy. So when he discovers Tyler inside his home, they get into a fight, a very intense fight. It's a pretty straightforward story, but remember, we're filming this in one shot, so it kind of has to be. Oh yeah, and this is my friend Xander. He's helping me film, and he's also making sure I don't trip over anything while walking backwards. Ooh. Dude, you got this. I actually feel you hard. got this. This stunt is way safer than Isaiah's table. Break. Okay. Way safer. I picked him up and threw him through a table. Roll the footage. Three, two, one. Stunts on the Isaac Carlton channel are crazy. After instilling some confidence in Tyler, we put the finishing touches on the wall and started rehearsing the shot. This is how they do it in Hollywood. Boom, right there. Okay, so the wall break happens halfway through the scene. But in order to even get to that part, we need to rehearse the start of the scene so that it all flows together seamlessly. And just as a reminder, we're not using any hidden cuts. So anytime we make a mistake, we'll have That's to reset the entire shot and start from the top. Oh! oh. <laughs> Guys, we're getting it, we're getting it. This is gonna be the longest part of the whole process. We need to make sure this is perfect. So right now we're just doing rehearsals, which is why I'm holding an iPhone. When we're actually filming the real scene, I will have a real camera. But this is just easier for now. <laughs> The first time this wall gets broken and we see how it breaks is gonna be when I'm going through it, which is slightly terrifying, but I guess that's the point of the one take shot. Jake's gonna land. 
like so, and hopefully nobody gets hurt. Nobody will, we're all professionals here. Yeah, already got hurt twice. To keep this from being the most boring video on YouTube, I'm hyperlapsing through the footage of us rehearsing because we literally spent hours choreographing this shot. On a normal shoot, I would just roll the camera and start filming right away, but because we don't have the luxury of editing out mistakes, we have to be perfect. But that being said, eventually you have to stop rehearsing and just go for it. And action! This is it, the first take. And as long as we all hit our marks, we'll have a finished movie. And the pressure's on, because once we break through the wall, there's no going back. <laughs> Literally, the start was perfect. It's like, do I just let you break through yeah, on the yeah. first take? And my heart's like racing. For the first take, that went incredibly well. But the reason we had to stop was because of this right here. Getting the spatula and wrench to lock together is really hard. So just like that, we're back to square one. Shot one, take two. And same problem. But getting the spatula and wrench to lock isn't the only obstacle in our way. You see, I made the interesting decision to film this at the brightest time of the day. Dang, it's bright out. And because it's so bright, I need to have one of these on my lens. This is called a neutral density filter, and it kind of functions like sunglasses for your camera. For example, the reason I can get a nice blurry background like this when it's so bright out is because I have this filter on. So it's doing its job. However, it's a lot darker inside the house than it is by the pool. So in order to get proper exposure when transitioning inside, I have to manually crank the filter so that it lets more light in. Otherwise, my shots look something like this. And that's just one of the technical elements that's making this shot so hard. Shot one, take four. Shot one, take five. Some of my camera work was a little dodgy. Shot one, take like six. Okay. I think we were inches away from success. Shot one, take seven. So it turns out, this whole one-shot movie thing is a lot harder than I realized. So after several unsuccessful takes, I opened up Milanote for some inspiration. So for the past few days, I've been organizing literally every detail of this one-take movie into Milanote, so that Jake, Tyler, and myself actually know what we're doing. I used a Milanote board to organize my entire pre-production process for this shot, and this is what it looks like. I started my board with reference images, which act as a storyboard for the shot we're trying to get. After that, I added some scenes for inspiration, including the infamous Mission Impossible bathroom brawl, which gave us needed inspiration for our fight scene. <laughs> Basically what we just did. Yeah. I also love creating mood boards in here because it's genuinely just so satisfying to do. For instance, this is the board that I made for my video where I recreated Hollywood movies at home. Being able to just drag and drop reference images into one spot like this is so helpful. And not to mention, it's very aesthetically pleasing. If you're interested in making some boards yourself, you can sign up to Milanote for free using the link in my description. Thank you, Milanote, for sponsoring this video. All right, guys. How everyone's gonna think we're bad Shot right? one, take. 40. I actually don't, do you know what we're on? Nine, I think. Okay, okay nine. I think I say the wrong number ever. Eight takes, and every one of them with its own set of problems. But finally, on take nine, this happened. So you might be thinking that I'm feeling really good right now. After all, we just smashed through the wall and it looked amazing. Well, it looked amazing for about two seconds. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh, 
Here I'm like lost. The first and most obvious mistake is that this iPhone and light are just clearly in the shot, which is not ideal. But that's not even the worst part. The main problem is that we all just kind of froze after the wall broke. Ideally, I would have crossed over the mattress while Jake and Tyler rolled off. But instead, we're left with this clunky shot where none of us really know what we're doing. And it's definitely not the shot we wanted. But hey, it's good enough. Psych, we're building another wall. And even though we'll never get it absolutely perfect, we can do a lot better. Besides, I did not drive all the way to Home Depot just to make a mediocre wall smash, okay? It is go time, this is it. Action! For real though, this is our last chance. We don't have any other walls. If we can't get this one right, we're done. Just like that, a childhood dream came to life. And if my 13-year-old self could see the future, he'd be smiling right now. That's gonna leave a mark. Woo! That was intense. <laughs> Let's go! I think we got it! Let's go! Was it recording? <laughs> Now the amazing thing about making a movie in one shot is that once it's filmed, the movie's finished. Psych! I wish that were the case, but I still have a lot of work to do, including re-recording all the sound effects. And that's how I spent the next day. So because we filmed in one take, we couldn't really prioritize the audio, which is why it sounds like this. <laughs> Which leaves me with one option, which is to re-record all the audio myself. All jokes aside, I actually really like this part of the process. Filmmakers often say that audio is more important than video, and I definitely agree with that. It's pretty annoying to watch something with low quality sound, but it's pretty easy to forgive low resolution footage. And trust me on this, I filmed my last short film on a $9 camera from Amazon. As you can imagine, the image quality wasn't 4K, but after watching the footage for a bit, I honestly forgot I was using a cheap camera. However, the same does not go for audio. You want your audio sounding crispy. So I put all my sound effects in, and this is what I'm at. That's just for the fight scene. This took me like six hours. I have to get back to work. It took a few more hours, but I eventually finished the audio. And this is what the final timeline looks like. Lots of sound, but just one single shot. And a very special one at that. If you want to watch the finished movie, you can click the link right here. Let me know what you think. This was so much fun, also very hard. I cannot imagine making a full length movie this way, but I'm sure someone could do it. Probably not me. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.